Hello, I'm Doug Sweetser, and this is my poster titled Failure to Accept the Diversity of Time's Relationship to Space Using Quaternions. Well, what is a quaternion? Well, um, it involves a position for time and three for space, but it behaves just like a number. You can add it, subtract it, multiply, or divide. So I've had some fun trying to redo fi physics laws using quaternions as a starting point. So we're going to start with classical physics, go to relativity, quantum mechanics, and then end up at symmetries. So Newton really was the founder of mathematical physics, and in every slide that follows, I will be talking about time, space, energy, and momentum. And they were all isolated, but it's good enough to do classical physics, and we really are still doing and learning things about classical physics to this very day. Now, Einstein figured out that time and space do have a relationship, that was special relativity, and his math teacher figured out, hey, that's just a rotation of a four-dimensional vector space, which kind of went beyond Einstein until he saw the diagram, and that, that of course, made everything so much clearer. The, the, on the angles there, that's where light is, and it divides the world into events in the past light cone, which can influence what happens at, that, at the origin, and the future light cone. And the stuff that's outside it, well, I mean, you can do problems out there, you know, but uh, it's for special relativity classes, but it's not going to influence what goes on right there at the origin. So I actually then said, hey, is this all we have? And I should say I've developed a, a new proposal for how gravity works that I'm going to be talking about on Tuesday, and that involves a different symmetry. Now, this symmetry does not uh, apply to inertial observers. This is for people who are four f f flights up from me, and they're not doing anything, so their change in energy is nothing, their change in momentum is nothing, and yet we ag learn to agree about some. I think we agree to energy times momentum. And that just accidentally cancels almost <laughs> in general relativity. Uh, but I think that maybe that could be the foundation for a new approach to gravity. Okay, so what is quantum physics? Everybody's going to give a different answer. None of the collection of people I've shown uh, are going to agree to my definition, which is very modern <laughs> in that it depends on uh, Bell's uh, inequality, which basically says that quantum mechanics can't be from local events. Remember, local events are in that past light cone that could affect the future. They're not those. Well, then where are they in the space-time diagram? That's a question you, people usually don't answer, but I think the answer is necessarily that it's some line, world line out there in, uh, in, in the space-like region of space-time. But you can't get there from here. <laughs> So you make the mirror image, you can do that, I mean, it's just a math thing, and then when you take the product of these two, you always necessarily get a real number. That's in the future, and those are the odds that you're going to see an event. So that's a kind of new interpretation of what quantum mechanics is, and I like it, because <laughs> I can draw it, and it sounds reasonable, at least in my ear. And now, finally, I want to talk about symmetries and conservation in physics. And that was uh, really the work of this woman, Emmy Noether, who doesn't get the recognition she probably should because I think the idea is pretty hard. <laughs> okay, um, I, I was looking at this thing called an action, which was m times the integral d tau, and I said, yeah, but what is that in terms of quaternions? I mean, I can't write that as a number. And, and when I kind of worked my way backwards, and when I did that, it looks like I'm taking space-time and I'm multiplying it by energy momentum and I'm integrating it and then I'm taking the variation of the integral of this thing and then I'm only dealing with the real number part. Uh, that's a lot <laughs> of stuff to unpack um, to get to at what's, what symmetry is. Um, so that's why it's so sophisticated and so hard to explain to, uh, to a lay audience. But uh, that applies to all kinds of physics, classical physics, relativistic ph quantum physics, and the combinations of, of those, those, those principles. So anyway, um, do stop by if you want to talk about time, space, 
energy and momentum and some of these leading figures and their takes on uh, those, those four things. Thank you very much.